On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're building a brand new hot rod. Well, am I ever excited about what I'm up to this week? I'm in the process of putting together and building my next ultimate mix platform for the studio. And I'm determined to do this without a subscription. In other words, when I'm finished building this hot rod DAW, I'm gonna be able to disconnect from the internet and run everything independently without that software checking to see if I paid rent, so to speak, okay? Now, I'm sure I could spend the next 15 minutes unloading on what I think about subscription-based software, but that is not what this session's about. And in fact, subscription-based software might be the ultimate solution for you and your situation. For me personally, it absolutely doesn't work. And I sort of wanna share some of the ideas why. Last night, I downloaded and installed the latest version of Pro Tools on my new iMac. Today, I'm just gonna take a few minutes and install and authorize some plugins. And while I'm doing that, just gonna share some ideas of why I like to do the upgrades that I do and why I wait so long between those upgrades. Now let's back up for a second. I'm talking about building my ultimate mix platform. Well, for me, that means it's Pro Tools. That absolutely doesn't mean it's Pro Tools for you. This is so, so important. There are so many choices of DAWs out there and different systems. And Pro Tools is about the least affordable option there is. So I'm not even gonna recommend Pro Tools to new users unless they're really thinking long-term. To me, it's the only way a perpetual license for something like Pro Tools makes any sense is if you're in this game for a long time. So a tiny bit of history on my upgrades and why I like to wait so long between those upgrades. My last major upgrade was 2013 when I put Pro Tools 10 HD on a 2013 iMac. Well, the major upgrade before that one would have been 2005 with my G5 Pro Tools and you know HD3 Excel package, right? So it's pretty apparent that I'm only doing major upgrades every once in a blue moon, and there's a reason for that. You know, when I bought my brand new Pro Tools system in 2005, I think I dropped 20 grand on that computer with all the HD Excel cards and all the plugins and authorizations. You know, that seems like a ridiculous amount of money, and it is. I mean, I'm an independent producer. That's not an easy thing to just drop for a piece of gear back then. But you know, I got eight years of service out of that system before I did my next major upgrade. So, you know, in the great big picture, when I look at all of the albums and everything that I produced on that G5 TDM system, that system didn't owe me one penny when I was ready to retire it. And this is a very, very important concept and thing that I wanna talk about. Retiring your DAW, please, don't wait until your DAW dies before you do an upgrade. This is so, so important. This is something that I've followed from day one. You know, in 2013, when I was ready to do that upgrade, it wasn't because I had to. It was just because my system was eight years old, running on like some super ancient operating system. And I was just sort of ready to do an upgrade. But the key and the most important thing I want to share is that I didn't wait for that G5 and that old TDM system to die. In fact, that system works as well today as it did when I put it together in 2005. That's unbelievable when you think about it. Well, because that system serviced my business so well for so many years, I made a decision to retire it intact. So this brings up another very important point that I wanna talk about. If you're a professional who plans on being in this business long-term, Number one, don't wait till your DAW dies before you do your upgrade. And when you do move into a new upgraded system, don't transition anything. Leave that old system perfectly intact with all its licenses, all its iLocks, everything, and start building a new system from scratch. Now, some of you are probably gonna go, what, Ken, what are you talking about? I literally buy software licenses again when I do that upgrade. I'm well aware that some of those licenses allow me to share them over multiple systems, but as a professional, I choose to buy an individual license for each system and leave it intact. The value that that adds to you as a producer, when an artist comes to you and says, you know that song we worked on 12 years ago? 
man, I had an opportunity to do something with that track, but I need an acapella version. And we didn't make one back then or whatever the case is. I can tell you personally, it is awesome to be able to go back and double click on that file and have it open up without a single question, without a single prompt, without a single e-licensor or iLock issue to just open those sessions up and be able to deal with it particularly in those really old school Pro Tools sessions where they were using Sound Designer 2 files. People are trying to go back to those old sessions and finding they can't open them up. They lose the resource fork off those files and it's just a bunch of confusion. Well, the beautiful thing of having these systems intact is that I can now go back and open up anything that I've worked on since 2005 with the double click of a button. It has proven itself to be priceless many, many times over the last number of years. So this is just something that's very important to me. You know, again, I'm a professional, so I can sort of justify reinvesting in all those licenses and sort of moving forward with that new system. You know, if you're making music as a hobby or a thing on the side, yeah, you don't need to be following this advice. But if you're making music professionally long term, this is something that adds so much value to you as a producer. The fact that you can go back and open sessions anytime right? Without having to move iLock licenses around or any kind of confusion like that. So, you know, all of that said, you sort of have to figure how would all this play out if I was on a subscription plan back in those days? You know, some of the companies I'm talking about that were making plugins back then, they're not even around today. So, you know, how would that subscription plan work, right? So you see why it's so important to me as a professional user, I have to own that license. I need to own it outright. It has to be on my computer or on an iLock or something so that I can launch that software. Boom. It just opens up. No questions asked. Not having to pay rent for it or anything like that. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of subscription-based software, but for you, it might be the perfect solution to be able to just go in and rent the system you're using for a couple of months while you're working on a record. Then maybe you go out on tour and you don't need access to your DAW. You're just going to go out and play guitar for like nine months on tour. Why should you be paying for a bunch of expensive software that you're not using? So subscription plans have their place. It's just for me personally, doesn't work. Well, let's go ahead and get some plugins installed and authorized on this new system. I've gone ahead and quit Pro Tools for the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Wave Central. This is an app I downloaded this morning and got all logged into my account. Oh man, do you remember the days when all of these software manufacturers used to send their license code in an email and you'd have to actually enter that manually into each one of these plugins and stuff? Oh man, well, most of these manufacturers have come up with a lot better system and Waves uses their own kind of proprietary little app. And it makes it so simple because I can log into my account and hit my products and see everything that I have not activated yet. So in this case, we can simply select all and let's just go and install and activate. So while Wave Central is busy at work on this thing, I think I'll go refresh my tea back in a couple minutes. Okay, boom, install and activate complete. That was a lot easier than dealing with all those activation codes. Oh man, that's awesome. So we can go ahead and quit Wave Central. Let's go to Sound Toys and uh, get Sound Toys. And it looks like we're almost finished downloading Sound Toys 5. That is a killer collection of tools that I use every single day when I produce and mix. And the agreement, continue, agree. Notice how much of that agreement I read? Oh man, how many times do we do that, right? Just agree, yes, agree, yes. Someone's throwing a contract at us and we just go, yep, crazy. Now, one thing I love software developers for is the way they're making these scripted packages, you know, so cool. This is just the beginning. You know, I think I just loaded up about 150 plugins and that is just a fraction of what is gonna be installed on the system. So this is exactly how I like to do my major upgrades. I like to hold out and wait and wait and wait and get maximum use of all the hardware, of all the software, all the plugins, everything that I've been using on that system until I'm finally ready to do an upgrade. Well, I encourage you to take what you can from this session. Not all of these ideas are gonna to apply to your situation. But if you're going long-term at this and making a career out of mixing and producing music inside of a DAW, I encourage you to retire these systems before it's necessary and start putting together a brand new one. When you do retire these systems, retire them intact. 
don't start breaking up those licenses and taking from, from this system so that you can put on that system. And just leave that system entirely intact and ready to open any one of the sessions that it built over the last eight years or whatever it's been, right? In this particular case, my old DAW is seven years old. So imagine all of the work that I can open on that old DAW. I don't want to lose that option. There's no way that I want to start disassembling that old DAW and building a new one. I just want to build a brand new kick butt system that I can move forward with for the next eight years and go back to this old system anytime over the next 20 years. Oh man, I'm so excited. I've got a ton of software I have to install and authorize on this system. Thank you for sitting in on today's session. I hope some of these ideas can help. <laughs> <laughs>